guess just uh, uh, I was getting some feedback for from the quiz on Friday. It looks like uh, most of you did pretty well. I haven't completed the grading yet, but I think by Wednesday you should get it back, and I'll discuss the solutions also briefly on Wednesday. Um, I also noticed that there was a lot of activity on the discussion forum just before the quiz, which is great. Uh, I think this is really the type of uh, uh, interaction that I would like to see on the Blackboard forum. Um, and uh, of course, that's really the easiest way to keep in touch with the developments of the course. Um, any questions on the quiz or on the lectures or homeworks or anything? Uh, we will have uh, a homework three. That's uh, that will be available today at 5 p.m., uh, which of course will be due first part on Friday, part two again on Monday as usual. Um, and that's mainly covering real work, real energy, and the virtual work uh, method uh, as well. So, <clears throat> any any questions before we jump into the material for today? No. All right, uh, go ahead, Mubin. Yeah, I'll do that, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, so what we'll do today is very briefly recap a little bit of the method of virtual work for trusses that we started last week before the quiz. And then we'll introduce this method of virtual work for beams and frames, uh, the, the handout that you have today. Um, so, Essentially, as I pointed out uh, uh, for the method of virtual work, the idea is that, uh, for example, if you have a real structure with some real loads uh, acting on it, what we'll do in stage one, in part one, is if we want the horizontal displacement at C, we place a virtual load P prime small virtual load at C. And in the presence of that small virtual load, then we really apply the uh, the real external loads that we uh, that the structure has. So in stage one, under the action of this P prime, um, um, there is some internal forces that develop in the truss. We need to find those internal forces uh, because those internal forces would be doing work or storing energy in the uh, in these members. So the idea is that once this P prime is applied, the external virtual work done through the displacement, through the real displacements, is P prime times delta that you're looking for, okay? Um, it's not half because it's not the real virtual, uh, the real external work. Virtual external work does not have that factor of half, right? That's the, uh, that's related to these things that we talked about. A green triangle is the real external work done, which always has this factor of half sitting in front. On the other hand, the virtual work looks like a rectangular yellow area. So we do not have that half in there. We just have P prime times the delta that we are looking for. Um, so with that logic, we said that um, you, can, uh, you can write the principle of virtual work as, as follows. Basically, whatever external vir uh, virtual force you applied, all the virtual quantities will have the prime and will be in red. So virtual force times real external displacement is equal to virtual internal forces times real internal displacement. It's always, <clears throat> uh, for the principle of virtual work, we are going to be looking at virtual forces times real displacement, okay? Um, on the left-hand side, we have external virtual work, and on the right-hand side, we have internal virtual energy being stored. And I think we went through this um, exercise last time of the different types of uh, real displacements you could have. Uh, you could have real displacements due to the applied loads. That's simply NL over AE. You could have real displacement. Um, here we go. You could have real displacement due to temperature change, or you could have real displacement due to a misfit, to member being too short or too long. Um, and any of those cases, you should be able to find out what the displacement of, uh, of any point in the structure is. And last time we were looking at this example that we had this truss, 10 kips applied load. And the question says, find delta y at C. I want to find the vertical displacement at this point. 
Um, um, so in this case, the first step uh, is that we calculate the real internal forces. 10 kips gets divided up into two, uh, 10 cosine 45 degrees for both and ends up uh, having a five, five kip tension at the bottom. So hopefully no surprises there. For the virtual force, as I pointed out, since we are looking at delta y at c, we need to put a p prime at c. Um, we calculated, I think I didn't mark the reactions, but there we go, p prime over 2, p prime over 2. And you should be able to calculate the rest of the internal forces just as so. Um, and then to apply the principle of virtual work, we really uh, what we are doing is uh, the same thing w e prime is equal to u i prime and this calculation is best done through this type of a table and in this table all we are doing is virtual force n the internal internal virtual forces due to the virtual fo uh, load applied and the real displacement due to the real loads applied so if we multiply those two we get internal energy okay um, and i pointed out last time that of course uh, if you sum all of this up, that's the total internal energy, virtual internal energy stored in the truss. Um, equate the external work done PY times del P prime times delta Y to this quantity and you will get, uh, you'll get this delta Y. So, um, um, I, maybe I get, went through this a little too fast, but um, if there's any questions on this, I can take that or we'll do a similar example right now. Um, all right, let me just jump into this example. So the same structure, uh, same 10 kip load, everything is exactly the same, but in addition to whatever that, uh, that 10 kip load was, uh, we have this member CD being heated up by, I think, yeah, 100 degrees centigrade. And um, it's given that the coefficient of expansion alpha is 10 to the minus 5 per centigrade E and A are given and the problem asks you for delta X at D okay so delta X at D so maybe what we'll do again is uh, um, I probably you're all in sitting um, in those groups of three or four so maybe take a minute or two this is not an in-class assignment. Uh, take a minute or two, discuss with your neighbor how you would go about trying to find the horizontal displacement using the method of virtual work, and then I'll uh, I'll bring it back and do it. We'll do all, uh, we'll do it together. Okay, so go ahead, discuss, and let me know if what you find out. No idea. No idea. <laughs> take a look at the previous example then. <laughs> um, and those of you who are sitting by yourself, you can turn around and it's supposed to be two rows together. This handout is not complete in your notes, right? No. Okay. <laughs> I thought I might have made the mistake again. So. Was that? <laughs> okay. Um, so how about uh, ideas on this? How should I proceed with virtual work on this problem? The problem says find the virtue, uh, find the real displacement delta x at point B. By virtual. 
right? Yeah, so we indeed apply a virtual load D prime in the horizontal direction at D, but does that change the real forces in the system? Does that force that does not change any anything about the real forces? The prince the virtual system is separate, real system is separate. Real system apply 10 kilo uh, 10 feet load that would not change anything. None of the internal forces would change. So exactly what we had in the previous example is also marked out here. Um, and that's why this is just as it is. For the virtual part, we will indeed apply a P prime here because we are looking for the horizontal displacement at X, um, which will cause what internal forces? If I apply a P prime here to this structure, what would be the internal forces? No, no, values, yeah. <laughs> okay, so P prime tension in AC and CD. Um, so I'll mark those P prime, P prime. How about the others? Zero. So all those are zero force members. And um, yeah. what would be the uh, external virtual work done? W E prime. What would be the external virtual work done by this P prime force that we applied? P prime times delta X. What about the factor of half? no half it's not real work right it's not the green triangle it's the yellow rectangle that we're talking about so it's p prime times um and maybe i'll get into the habit of writing virtual things with red as well so sorry p prime times delta d x um and at this stage all we need to do is to mark all the internal forces so the virtual force in AB is zero, BD is zero, AC is P prime, CD is P prime, and BC is zero. And the real displacements, how do I calculate the real displacements in, in all of these members? PL or AE, right? What is P there? or NL over AE, because N is the internal force in all of these members. If I know the internal force in a truss member, it's very easy to calculate the, the amount of deflection or the amount of dis, uh, de, uh, deformation that member will have. We derived that last time, NL over AE. So um, all, all I need to do is to mark the internal force times the length for each one of these members. And let's see, five feet, five feet, so yeah. Um, we have internal force in AB is 5 square root 2, negative, that's compression, and times um, 5 square root 2 is the length divided by AE. Um, BD, same thing, minus 5 square root 2 times 5 square root 2 over AE. This is all just NL over AE for those two members. Um, and for AC and CD, we'll have 5 and 5. So I'll mark those. 5, 5 over AE, 5. NL over AE for that. And BC is a zero force member, so that will not have an internal um, internal displacement. Um, is there any other real external displacement? Um, the deviation and the Sorry, sir, again? Right. So those are indeed the real displacements that are um, that are being imposed. One is that this member is being heated. Members AB and BD, these two members are too short by 0.1 inch. So all we need to do is to just add them to the real displacements. 
so member AB and BD I'll just add 0.1 inch um, and I might need to convert uh, that to feet so to short means minus 0.1 divided by 12 minus 0.1 divided by 12 and CD is being heated by 100 degrees so alpha delta T times length that's the change in length for this guy um, let me find CD so that's plus um, 10 to the minus 5 delta T is 100 times length is 5 okay and um, you can again multiply all of these two uh, these these two columns together and write the result here 0 0 we have um, 25 P prime over AE same thing here 25 P prime over AE uh, plus P prime times um, 10 to the minus 3 times 5 and if you sum that up you get this quantity and again in, uh, equating external uh, virtual work to internal energy P prime cancels off once again P prime uh, that's again uh, why P prime does not matter and we have the delta X uh, horizontal displacement at D so principle of virtual work uh, is really um, much more general than the real energy real work that we looked at before um, and it's not terribly more complicated. Miles? Um, on the previous day, we had the um, E equal to delta L. Why did you just use um, like the out short word number as instead of the delta times the length of the number? Um, no, no, I did exactly that. I think uh, 0.1 inch is, uh, is how much AB and BD are short by. So 0.1 inch just divided by 12 is is that. Uh, nope, nope. Because if you look at um, D, the real displacement is simply delta L. It's not divided by L, right? Um, all right. So um, you'll get some more practice on these uh, virtual work method for trusses on the homework. Um, uh, but what we'll do now is jump into the method of virtual work for beams. That's the handout for today. So essentially, uh, the basic idea of the method of virtual work for beams and frames is also exactly the same. If you're given a beam or a frame, that is under certain external loads, this P that I'm drawing here. And maybe, uh, well, let me ask you this question first. If, if I want to use the real work and real energy method, then what displacement or rotation can I find? For this particular problem, simply supported beam, load applied at the midpoint, um, um, if I use the real work, real energy method, then there is one displacement that I can find. What is that? Displacement right at where the load is applied, at mid-span, right? If I want rotation somewhere else, or if I want displacement somewhere else, I cannot really use the real work, real energy method. And that's why we want to um, find a way to uh, find a way to apply the method of virtual work to find that. So let's say I want to find a vert uh, vertical displacement at some other point in the beam right here for example or if I want to find the end rotation or rotation at some other point uh, theta here. In that case what we'll do is we'll again use the principle of virtual work divide the problem into two stages. In the first stage we are going to apply a load P prime where with, uh, where we want the displacement um, or if you want the rotation at this point I'm going to apply a virtual moment M prime um, that's just stage one when I apply that P prime or M prime the structure will deflect a little bit 
but assuming again that the uh, that this p prime is extremely small in comparison to the real load that deflection will be almost negligible but it will indeed cause some internal virtual bending moment okay so this p prime will cause some internal virtual bending moment what would it look like what would a simply supported beam with a load at some point here in the beam the bending moment diagram what would that look like for it um go ahead kyle yeah um so yeah it would be linear from here to here and back up to zero right a triangle type of a bending moment diagram same thing uh, or a similar thing here when I apply a bending moment or, or an external virtual moment M prime, um, it will also cause an internal virtual moment. And what would that look like? That would uh, not constant. It would be linear from zero, from zero, zero here all the way to a constant, sorry, positive actually, uh, positive M prime here, right? Um, that's just stage one. For stage two, then we are going to really apply the actual real load P. In the presence of P prime or in the presence of M prime, we are not going to change P prime or M prime in stage two, but we are just going to apply that real load. And in doing so, what will happen is this P prime will do some virtual external work. That virtual external work would be P prime times delta Y or this guy m prime times real theta so that would also be m prime times real theta that would also be a yellow rectangular external virtual work all of that external virtual work will get stored as internal virtual energy throughout the beam let me ask you this now how does a beam store internal energy it of course it deflects and as it deflects, if you look at any two cross, uh, uh, any segment of the beam, that segment of a beam has two cross sections. They bend with respect to each other. They have curvature within them. And as soon as a beam uh, section has a curvature in the, within it, well, it has, it, it's behaving like a rotational spring and it's storing energy within it, right? So uh, that's what I'm trying to show you here. In each of those sections, and each of those sections under the action of the real load, there is some real curvature being created. So internal energy would be uh, the total of the real internal energy. That would be triangular area and the virtual internal energy, which would again be an integral of the yellow rectangular areas. And we'll go through a, a little bit more detailed uh, derivation of this. So as we just found out, on, on the left hand side, if you're looking for the displacement, you apply P prime, the virtual external work done would be what? P prime times delta Y. So P prime remains constant and it moves by delta Y. So yes, uh, virtual P prime times real delta Y. And on the right hand side, if I apply the virtual moment, it goes through, it goes through a real displace or a real rotation of theta L. What would be the external virtual work done? M primes theta L. There is no half again. So M prime is the virtual moment. Theta L is the real, dis, uh, real rotation. So virtual external work done either in the presence of a force or a moment is simple. Uh, how about the internal virtual energy stored? How would, how would I find the internal virtual energy stored either for the load, either for P prime or for M prime? So here's a little bit more of uh, a little more of that thought experiment. Um, consider this beam. Um, I want to find the rotation. Well, uh, I'm looking at this right, right hand side plot, subplot here. I want to find the rotation here. Right? I applied a small, a very small M prime here. That caused 
an internal bending moment everywhere along the beam. Now, in that second stage, I apply a load here, which caused the beam to deflect in the presence of that already applied in front. Okay. So what happened? If you look at a beam section, that beam section was already under M prime, and when the real load was applied, it deflected more. So it stored energy during that process. What would be the amount of that energy? M prime times curvature. So virtual bending moment times real curvature is what it will be. No half again, because of course, uh, it's the virtual quantities we are looking at. Um, so we'll write that as here, M prime times real curvature d theta dx integral from 0 to L dx. Okay. Um, this real curvature, I'll mark that as here, real curvature is simply equal to the real bending moment diagram, big M, divided by EI, the virtual M prime, this is the virtual bending moment, okay, and the same thing uh, works on the right hand side also, it's the virtual bending moment in the because of that virtual big M prime that we applied and times the real curvature d theta dx um, and integrated 0 to L dx. So once again, this M prime is due to the capital M prime um, and this d theta dx is due to the real load P that was applied. Okay. Um, and after this point, it's some relatively straightforward. We just e equate uh, we prime to ui prime and you'll see that we can uh, take this p prime so maybe i'll do that here um, i've already done that um, so p if i can take p prime to the other side it gets divided out um, divided out by m prime divided by p prime this quantity is really what your book uh, calls m but just to make it clear where it came from i went through this derivation okay so if you look Look this. Uh, look at this M in, in your books. Don't get confused by what this is um, in relation to what I've been talking about. It's just M prime divided by P prime or this M prime divided by big M prime. Okay. Um, so let's take a quick example on this. We have done this example quite a few times. Cantilever beam, applied load, applied tip load P. Um, and we are again looking for the uh, for the vertical displacement at this point. So if we are looking for the vertical displacement at this point, we will need to apply a P prime also at that point in stage one. Make sense? Um, what would be the bending moment diagram if I apply P prime, P prime on the tip of this cantilever? What would be the bending moment diagram for a P prime for a cantilever beam applied here, which is basically here. I'll draw, I'll write the bending moment due to uh, the virtual loads just as well here. So P prime times L would be the end moment. And for the real load, it's same curve, but just a different magnitude. Right? In one case, it's P prime. In the other case, it's P. So what would be the external virtual work done in stage two when we apply the real load? P 
prime times delta y the word the virtual force p prime travels through a distance delta which means it's virtual force times real displacement and the internal energy stored will be virtual bending moment which is p prime times l minus x times the real curvature which is simply p times l minus x divided by ei integrated from 0 to l dx and um, this will be equal to p prime times p um, integral 0 to l l square I'll pull ei out as well l square minus 2xl plus x square dx and without going through the algebra or maybe I can it's not too bad so p prime over ei um, l cube minus 2l cube over 2 and plus l cube over 3 and if you equate these two now then p prime and p prime cancel off and you get the same vertical displacement that i've that we've always gotten make sense go ahead I which p prime times l this guy this is the virtual bending moment so uh, let me draw that again actually um, so um, if i apply a real load p and I'm looking for that real displacement delta, then uh, my bending moment diagram, real bending moment diagram would be um, something like this, which would be PL here, positive. At the same time, my virtual system is also the same, same beam, is the same beam, my virtual system is also exactly the same right so we'll have the same bending moment diagram for the virtual system as well except it will be p prime times l and the equation would be p prime l minus x in this case it would be p times l minus x okay and just to be consistent with stage one stage two i'll put this on the right So what we do is stage one, we apply a P prime, we get a bending moment uh, within the beam, and then we go to stage two, when we apply the real load in the presence of that P prime, we get some real displacement delta, and during that real displacement, this P prime will do a work in the amount of P prime times that delta. And all of that external virtual work will get stored in the beam uh, as this bending moment that was due to p prime times the real curvature that this real bending moment diagram will produce so once again this is this will take some uh, a while, some thought from you to make sure you understand what's going on really here um, and we'll have a couple more occasions to go through this uh, this idea under uh, under a real load if we want to look for displacement here the first thing we do is we apply a virtual load at that point or a virtual moment at that point. In the presence of uh, the resulting bending moment, the virtual bending moment, we apply the real load. And uh, that's basically how we are able to equate WE prime to w, uh, UI prime and get unknown displacements. Okay. All right. Um, let's take a few examples. I think that will clear up things even more. Um, so we'll do this example and maybe, yeah, we'll do this example as a, uh, uh, together and the next example we'll do as an in-class exercise. So um, for this particular beam, um, 
we have one external load P. Since it's pretty much the structure is symmetric, this overhang really does not affect anything. We have P over 2, P over 2 as the reactions. The bending moment diagram for this real load is quite simple. The triangular type of distribution, positive of course. We also have the expressions for that. So this guy is P over 2x. This guy is P over 2 times 2a minus x. And the question asks for the slope and deflection at C. At this point C, I want to find the slope of the beam and the vertical deflection at C. Okay, so first part to find the slope at C, what should I do? Apply a virtual moment at C. So I'll go ahead and apply that. M prime. Okay, um, what would the reactions be? What would the reactions be? M prime over 2A. Yeah, the total moment is M prime. These forces have to be equal and opposite. So indeed, it would just be um, M prime over 2A and M prime over 2A, which means that the bending moment, the virtual bending moment diagram for the beam would look like this. Zero here all the way up to what? M prime. It would go up all the way to M prime and it will be constant M prime, excuse me, here. So now to find the slope, I need to find W E prime. What is W E prime? M prime is theta, right? So virtual moment applied times the real theta at C that I'm looking for, no half, right? Um, Ui prime would be, would be what? Internal energy stored in the beam. So just look at the previous page, we said M prime, the virtual bending moment times real curvature. That's what we need. Or same thing here, right? M prime times virtual curvature, uh, virtual bending moment times real curvature. So that's what we'll do. Um, virtual M prime times real curvature. First of all, I'll just go ahead and write that. Integrate that over 0 to 3a dx. But there's one good thing here that the real curvature in the third, last third of the segment is zero. So all I need to do is to integrate from here to here, right? Can I double that up? Careful, can I double that up? No, we cannot double that up. So we will indeed need to write that as two separate integrals, zero to a, and the first part, well, let me just write the equation for this guy. It would be m prime divided by 2a times x. Not too bad. Um, so that would be m prime divided by 2a times x. That's the virtual bending moment times the real curvature. That would be p over 2x divided by ei. Right? The bending moment in this part divided by EI is the real curvature. And DX, and I think I'm going to need some more space. So I'll do that. Um, <laughs> um, hopefully you have been writing small. So, <laughs> so um, not equal to, but plus. Plus. Uh, a to 2a of uh, virtual bending moment equation remains exactly the same times real curvature 
that's p over 2 times 2a minus x divided by ei dx okay so so after this point it's all just a bunch of algebra you can verify well, hopefully what i did here i didn't make any uh, algebraic mistakes but really the entire problem is how to set up we prime and ui prime if you set that set that up correctly there's very little chances to go wrong with that and easily you can find by equating them that um, theta c should turn out to be p a square over 4 e i okay any questions on this no all right how about second part the word the vertical deflection at c all right so we'll apply p prime um, should I apply going up or going down? Does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. If I apply going down and the actual displacement is going up, I'll just get a negative value for that. If I apply going up, I should get a positive value because clearly under the real load, C should go up, right? So if C is supposed to go up and I'm marking that as a negative bending moment diagram, I will intentionally draw it in the wrong direction, P prime, just to show you that it works. Um, so, um, in this particular case, um, this reaction should be P prime times, I believe, uh, 3 over 2. And this reaction down should be P prime divided by 2. And this equation would again be P over 2 times X. Once again, the last third I don't have to worry about because the real bending moment in that region is 0. Okay. So WE prime, as usual, is is uh, virtual force times real displacement and the internal virtual work is virtual bending moment times real curvature integrated over 0 to 2a um, which in this case happens to be uh, p prime over 2 times x and uh, okay real bending moment divided by ei dx 0 to a and looks like I have again managed to plus integral a to 2a, same virtual moment, p prime over 2 times x, but a different um, real curvature, that would be p over 2 times, I believe, 2a minus x, sorry, 2a minus x divided by ei, and dx. Once again, I'll let you verify uh, the calculations. April? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yes. Uh, that's negative p prime over 2x. And that's the reason why there should actually be a negative here, here, and here. Okay. All right. So I believe we have five minutes left. You guys do this last one as an in class uh, exercise. And then this will be your ticket out the door. Uh, so please do take a piece of paper, write your name on it. Um, and I'll repeat the question. Um, 
we have this cantilever beam with a uniformly distributed load. The real part of the problem I've already solved for you. Um, the bending moment diagram looks like this. Of course, it would bend in a, uh, in a negative curvature. Um, the question asks, determine the displacement of point B at the tip of the beam. Uh, no need to use these actual EI values, just write EI uh, for your calculations.